Hey y'all, hey, uh, hello Gate community and the rest of the world. Uh, this is Lee Clawson coming to you from the auspices of, did I say that right? Yeah, the Gate Church, we'll put it that way. And uh, I'm just really very excited to be here right now and to share God's word with you. And uh, so I, I hope this, by the time you see this, I, I hope that, uh, that some of our society has kind of went back to uh, a little normal. Is that, should I say that? Maybe we shouldn't go back to normal. Maybe we should uh, go deeper into the kingdom. But thank you anyway for, for, for tuning in to this broadcast. It's not a broadcast, is it? But whatever it is, thank you for tuning in. And um, I'm, but I'm going to ask you uh, if you would just do me a, a favor uh, as you listen today that you get a, a piece of paper and a, and a pen and just jot down uh, some of the scriptures that, that uh, I bring out because I feel like they're very timely uh, for such a time as this. And that, and that you do a thing that you, that you do think two things with your Bible, that you stick to your Bible and you stick things in your Bible that you when you write down these scriptures that you put them in your Bible and that later on as you're holding your devotion time your time of prayer and word that uh, that you'll you'll see these and you'll you'll pull these out and you'll go over them because I think they're very powerful scriptures well let's face it all of the Bible is powerful it's God word it's God's word for us today and even it's even more powerful as we go through this time of, of virus and, and quarantine and the other chaotic events that we're experiencing in our culture today. That God's word actually, uh, actually gives you strength and power for living so that the wisdom of God rests in, in your heart and in your life and in your family. Because these are perilous times. And these are times where we desperately need God's presence, his spirit, and his word to be strong in us. So that for two things, that will shine for him and that will give away Jesus as a result of that. Hallelujah. I uh, mentioned uh, perilous times. These are perilous times. These are very questionable times. Uh, as such as I've never ever seen before. But you know what? Uh, it's the most exciting time for us to be alive as true believers. And I stress that term, true believers. That, that we lay hold of the strength of the Lord that will give us that power for living that we desperately need, not for us and our, and, and our families, but also to the ones that God is, is bringing up right to your path, right down your path, right down your alley, if you will, so that you can, you can pray with people, not only for salvation, that you'll lead people to Christ, but also, also that you'll pray for healing, body, soul, and spirit, and that the Spirit of God will be there, present on you with that power, that those people will be healed and delivered and saved by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, I'm just gonna go over some scriptures now and um, I'm going to start with Matthew 24. I'm just going to kind of nail things down here uh, as we go. Um, I know that some of you uh, are, are, some Christians are really going through uh, a lot of turmoil right now. And they're questioning things. They're questioning their own salvation. And they're, they're questioning the things of God. But I'm telling you, that God is very present and at work in you and your family if you let him. If you reach out to him in prayer, I guarantee you his presence will strengthen you, encourage you, and give the power that you need to, uh, to live for today. Uh, as I start with Matthew 24, I'm just going to start with the, the words of Jesus that I think are very powerful. And as, as, this video, uh, as this video happens, that you'll feel the power of God enter, enter your being 
And you'll have that peace and assurance and that strength to get you where you need to be today. Matthew 24, verse 4, Jesus and answered and said to his disciples, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many come, will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9. We're going to go to verse 9, Craig. Sorry. And then they will deliver you up to tribulation, and some of you will be killed. And you will be hated by all nations for my, for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and hate one another. I'm going to stop right there. That's, that's enough for now. But uh, late, later on the week, I want you to turn back to Matthew 24 and read the whole chapter. For it, it is a very powerful piece of scripture. And I guarantee you, God, uh, God will give you uh, not only the knowledge of his word, but he'll give you uh, insight to how these things will happen uh, in the near future. These are the beginning of sorrows, Jesus said, and I know that we're right smack in the middle of them. Uh, but really, I don't say that to, to, to try to, to, to scare you or, or to try to uh, bring up any, any kind of negativity, just the opposite. Because Jesus gave us these things to en encourage us, but also to let us know the things that will unfold as, as, he, uh, as he allows them to, to unfold. Because you see, he still has control. I'm going to turn to verse, excuse me, to Proverbs 11, verse 14. This was a, uh, uh, these next few scriptures were scriptures that, that I read here not just a few weeks ago. And to me, they were, they were very prevalent and powerful to what we're going through today. Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I'm going to turn to Proverbs uh, 29 now. Proverbs 29 and I think verse 18. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Uh, I'm going to quote from the New King James. Actually, I, let me read the New King James first, and then I'll quote the, the King James. So the New King James, verse 18 of, of uh, Proverbs 29 says, Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. And of course, that's talking about the law of God. And that's what we're talking about here. Um, the New King James says, Without vision... The people perish. And that's the very thing that the devil these days is trying to take, take out, out of our society and out of our culture is fresh vision. The vision of God and the vision of who Jesus is. Without that vision, things start going haywire. Without us really having a hold on who Jesus really is, it won't take long before trouble will enter your life and your family. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ is at work. It says that in the gospel, especially the gospel of John, Jesus and his father is actively at work, not only in our lives, but in setting up his kingdom as we live, live our lives for Christ. Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. I think right now in the, in the last few weeks that we have actually seen the second half of this verse take place. The people are casting off restraint. A lot of people are kind of freaking out, if I can use that terminology. Uh, a lot of fear has, has been put into a lot of people's hearts. And people are casting off restraint and they think that they can do, do just whatever they want. 
including some of our political leaders. And I'm not, I'm not going to say anything more political right now. Maybe I will, maybe I will. We'll, we'll see. Because uh, I feel like we can get so caught up in our current events that we're losing a grip on the things that really matter. We can get so caught up in what's happening in our society that is taking us out of, of what God is doing in our lives and fear grips us. But I'm going to tell you right now, as this video progresses, that the Spirit of God is going to move into your living room or, or your car or wherever you're seeing this video. And the presence of the Lord will break that fear and that anxiety and that depression off of your heart, your life, and your mind right now in the name of Jesus. I'm calling my shot right now by the blood of the Lamb that the things of the devil are broken off your heart and your mind as you hear these words. We're going to turn back to Proverbs 11:14. I'm going to repeat that verse again. I think it bears repeating. It's Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. What is talking about this, this counsel is talking about the counsel of God. And we know that there's a lot of things flying around right now about what we should do, what we shouldn't do, this and that. But I'm telling you, it's the counsel of God is what we need. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. What we need now more than anything is the counsel of God and what God is speaking to us. We need that very much in our lives. I'm going to turn to um, Proverbs 24 and verse 10. Proverbs 24 and verse 10. We're in Proverbs quite a bit right now, but that's okay. It's still God's word, and we still desperately need it. Proverbs 24, verse 10. This is, this is a scripture that I thought of a few years ago when uh, a good friend of mine by the name of, of uh, uh, Kirchhoff, um, uh, Mr. Kirchhoff, uh, we were going to church there in Peoria together, and... Um, Al Kirchhoff, actually. Uh, we were going to ch uh, church together, and we were talking about the last days, about things changing, the summing up of the coming of the Lord, and, and, and maybe the possibility we may have to go through some hard times. And uh, Mr. Kirchhoff told me, he says, you know what? I think I can get through those times. In fact, he says, you know what? I know I can. I know that I can depend upon Jesus. And he'll get me through all the, the, the tribulation and all the trouble if we have to go through any. And right away, that, that faith that, that he kind of injected into my being, I thought of the scripture right away. Proverbs 24, verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. I'm going to repeat that. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You see, one thing that, that God... Uh, really wants us uh, to have in our life is his strength and to function in his strength to act into his strength to step into his strength and I'm talking specifically about the strength of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit um, I, I, I feel like all the way through God's word that it's very plain that when, when we're weak, when we're weak, we can, we can actually reach out and lay hold of his strength. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, ask and receive. I want you to hold up five fingers on one hand and two fingers on the other hand. And I want you to blink them or flick them, if you will. Matthew 7, 7. Matthew 7, 7. Jesus said, ask and receive. Seek and you will find. And knock and it will be open to you. I'm telling you right now, if you pray and ask God to fill your life, he'll do it. You want to know why I know that? Because that's just who he is. Jesus has never failed on anything in anybody's life, ever. You may think he has, but I guarantee you down the road, you'll find out that he hasn't. 
Jesus has never failed you and he's never failed anyone in this life. But what he does want, he wants to hear your voice. Ask and receive. Seek and you'll find and knock and it'll be open to you. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. I'm going to turn now to um, Psalms 33. Talking about the counsel of God. Psalms 33, verse 11. Psalms 33, verse 11. Almost got it. All right. Psalms 33, verse 11. I'm going to start with verse 10. Is that okay, Craig? <laughs> the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his hearts to all generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. If you have received Christ as your Savior, you are the people of his inheritance. You are chosen of God. Jesus said, uh, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. If you have received Christ in your life, you are the chosen. You are his inheritance. You belong to him. Is what that's saying. But the counsel of the Lord stands forever. More desperately, more than any time on the face of this earth, are we needing the counsel of God? Are we needing to hear his voice specifically for you and your family? And he will give it if you ask him. I'm going to turn now to uh, Proverbs 19. Again, this is the counsel of the Lord. Proverbs 19. His name is Jesus, and he loves you more than anything. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many plans in man's heart, but nevertheless the Lord's counsel, that will stand. Again, there are many plans in a man's heart, but nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. If you reach out for the counsel of God, I guarantee you it will be solid and sure and steadfast in your life. And you can stand on that. You can bank on that. You can be sure that his counsel, whatever he speaks to you, will be truth and life for you. Isaiah 27, verse 5. I got a lot of scripture here, but that's okay. You can handle it. Isaiah 27, verse 5. The prophet Isaiah. I think Jesus quoted more from the prophet Isaiah than from any other prophet. Um, some people call the book of Isaiah uh, a New Testament book that was caught in the Old Testament. I don't know if I'd go that far, but it definitely is very clear about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Uh, it was written some 400 years before the time of Christ. So uh, anyway, uh, Isaiah 27, verse, verse 5. Or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me, and he will make peace with me. This is talking about uh, the day of adversity, uh, the few verses before this, talking about how God will destroy his enemies. But he's saying to his enemy, if you will turn and take hold of my strength, I'll let you do it. I will let you approach me and I'll let you take hold of the strength that you need in your life. This is God's word. I'm going to turn now to, um, to 1 Kings 19. And this is uh, 
the prophet Elijah during uh, the time when Elijah was uh, kind of a powerhouse in a way in the kingdom of Israel. Uh, he had he had called down the power of God in Mount Carmel and I think there was like a couple hundred um, prophets of Baal in a few a few days or a few weeks before this for the, the, the scripture I'm going to bring out and Elijah was by himself on Mount Carmel he called down the power of God and the fire of God come down and licked up the sacrifice it says and it says that the nation of Israel repented the whole nation of Israel repented at that that particular time and as if that wasn't enough Elijah himself executed the prophets of Baal the prophets of the devil wow we need we need Elijah back don't we but anyway uh, what happened was right after that that King Ahab who was a, a wicked king in Israel at that time he had a wife whose name was Jezebel and uh you know what? She wasn't a, a very uh, she wasn't a very good gal. She uh, she was obstinate towards the things of God. She set up uh, idol worship in the nation of Israel, and she was doing everything she could to destroy the kingdom of God in Israel at that time. So she uh, she called her shot on Elijah because she hated Elijah. Because Elijah was ushering in the power of God back into Israel. And she sent a message to Elijah saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop a mud hole in you. And then I'm going to give your carcasses to the birds. So poor Elijah, he, uh, he kind of got his eyes of what God was doing in his life. And he ran. He ran from Jezebel. And he uh, went into the wilderness. And I'm going to start with verse 4. Of, I, of 1 Kings 19. He turned tail and he ran. So that he wouldn't face the wrath of Jezebel. So it says that Elijah, in verse 4, he, he went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and he sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed and he said, It's enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I'm no better than my father's. In other words, poor me, poor me, poor me. I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to cash in and die, so you just might as well take me now. But you know what? The Lord had a had another, another way of doing things other than what Elijah was thinking. In other words, God was saying to him, listen, you're not getting out of here this easy. I've got more for you to do. And you know what? I'm just going to say that, that, that the Lord's telling you that right now. I've invested a lot into your life. I've put a lot in you, and I want to return in my assets. I'm expecting to put my power in you and you're just going to be very, very, very surprised at what happens with, with, with your life when I fill it with, with my presence and my spirit. So let's jump down to uh, verse 9. It says that then Elijah went deeper into the wilderness and verse 9 says, and he went into a cave. And he spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They killed your prophets with a sword. And here I am. I am the last one left. I'm alone. And then they want to take my life. And then the Lord said to him, get yourself up. And go stand on that mountain. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains, and it broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. 
And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a still small voice, God's voice. And so it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and he went out and he stood in the entrance of the cave and suddenly that voice came to him. You know, I, I'm, I'm not really down on, on uh, what uh, the, the things that, uh, that we have to, to follow as far as uh, the, the governor's orders and all. I'm not really down on that. If, if you feel like that uh, you have to wear a mask, go ahead. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not wearing a mask uh, if I can help it. I mean, yeah, I, I, I like going to Walmart, so I'll, I'll wear a mask. So, And that may be hypocritical, but that, that's all right. I'm, I'm doing what I see Jesus do. But I'm, I'm here today to tell you the mask that we really need is the mask that Elijah wrapped around his face. Because when the presence of God come, it says that he took his mantle and he wrapped his face in his mantle. And then the voice of the Lord came to him. This is the real mask. This is the real thing that we need in our lives today. That we wrap our face with the presence of God. That we wrap around our, 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 our face, our nose, and our mouth the Spirit of God and the anointing. The anointing is what we desperately need to live this life out to the fullest and to be victorious. Let's wrap our face just like what Elijah did. When he, when he realized that God was on his life, even though he was running from the devil, he realized that he needed to wrap the mantle, the anointing, around his nose and his mouth and then to function in the power of God. We need to follow suit with what Elijah did. This is the real mass that we need, that we wrap our face with the Spirit of God, and then we'll hear his voice. I'm going to close with this scripture in uh, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. Talking about God. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? Whose voice then shook the earth, just like it did back with Elijah in 1 Kings. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more, I will not only shake the earth, but also the heavens. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. As of things that are made. In other words, the things that God has created. And the things that man has created. And that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Since, therefore, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Beloved, I'm telling you through this video right now that God is actively trying to pour his spirit and his presence into your heart, into your life, and into your family so that you will not experience the things that are being shaken. This whole world is being shaken right now through uh, this virus and through quarantine and through uh, uh, violence that's going around different parts of the country. 
Everything is being shaken and tested. And it says all the way through scriptures that God tests men's hearts. Here's something I thought, I thought of several years ago. If God is testing me, all I need to put down is Jesus on the test. And I get an A. Because I don't have the strength that I need to get through these things. But I know who does. His name is Jesus and he has promised in his word that he will protect us, heal us, and bring us into the right things that we need for such a time as this, for such a days as this. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I'm going to pray for you now. Uh, and if you, will, if you will bow your heads and, and close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes. You can actually leave your, guys, leave your eyes open. In the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb, right now, I'm asking the Holy Spirit right now to come right into your heart and into your life and into that, that room or that car, wherever you're seeing this video that the presence of God right now is coming to you right now. And I know you can feel it. And right now I ask for the Holy Spirit to heal and to restore your life to the fullest. Maybe you were uh, really hot on with Jesus years ago and that, that waned and that left. But right now the, the Holy Spirit is refilling your life with who he is. And the things of God are, are, are becoming strength to you right now. That you're feeling strength right now in the name of Jesus. You're receiving healing, body, soul, and spirit. And I break off anxiety and depression and fear. I, I speak against the demonic of fear right now by the blood of the Lamb that is broken off of your mind and your heart right now. And you're sensing freedom and release right now. Do you feel that? Do you feel that soothing and that release right now, that's by the Spirit of God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. That God is filling your life and there's more to come. By the blood of the Lamb. That the things of the devil are broken off your mind. You no longer have to... I break worry off of your heart and your mind right now. I break that worry. Now peace is filling you now. The peace of God is filling you right now. In the name of Jesus. That you can function in, in, in happiness and in the counsel of God. By the blood of Jesus. I pray these things are, are filled, that you are filled to an overflowing right now. That you feel that overflowing and you're being healed right now. Those things that you were struggling with in, with in the past year, past few months, that's being broken right now and you're feeling release. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb. If, if you're receiving ministry uh, right now, I'm going to ask you to call uh, the gate. I think uh, Steve Miller's number is probably the, that you, or you can email Steve Miller. If you've received ministry, if you've received, received release and restoration through this video, please get a hold of us. Uh, that sums up our video right now. I've taken a couple minutes longer, but I always get forgiveness. So We love you here from Jesus is the Gate Ministry. And we can't wait to see your face. And uh, hallelujah. Goodbye. <laughs>